Sarah with Obadiah's and today I am going to do a first burn video for you guys on the Rizzoli ML80. That is this guy right here. I am so excited to finally do this first burn for you guys on the ML Stacked series. I have a lot of videos on the other Rizzoli models, the L90 and the S90, um, so be sure to check those out. I've done other overview models on the Stacked one, um, however, I've not actually burned the stove. So, so far I've been super impressed with the quality of Rizzoli products, so I am stoked to do this overview for you guys today. During my first burn videos, I will start by slowly breaking in the stove. This allows the paint and the steel and everything to be able to properly cure, okay? So we're gonna start with a small kindling fire. We let that burn down to a nice bed of coals, after which we will do our medium fire, which is generally about two logs. That'll burn down to a nice bed of coals, then we go into our hot, hot burn, and then we will damper the stove down for the end of the night to check the burn times. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I will also take you guys through the various temperature readings on the stove as we go through the process. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start again, good dry kindling. I start with a variety of sizes. I just kind of crisscross them on the bottom. Again, always wood, no paper. Why? Paper produces excess smoke and fly ash. So it's just honestly unnecessary. If you have good dry wood, um, it should be no problem to get your fire started. Also, I do remove the bark off of the wood um, because bark can cause dirty glass. So if you're noticing that your stove is burning with dirty glass and you're burning a lot of excess bark, that could be part of your problem. Or if your wood is green, wet, unseasoned, that can also cause dirty glass, dirty burns. All right, I have my handy dandy blowtorch, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my fire started. So you wanna make sure that your oven damper control is gonna be open here. Um, all your bottom damper controls you're gonna have wide open as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing lit up. As always, without any kind of paper, um, you can very easily just get your stove lit. The glow torch is a very handy tool to have. As far as sleep he goes, yeah, you don't want to walk away and leave the torch in here, but if you're standing here watching the fire, there's no problem with this. You can already hear the flame crackling and keeping it off, which is very, very nice. Um, not really any smoke. Um, there are these Italian cook stoves do have little holes in the wok removable ring. And sometimes when you're first getting that fire lit, you can have a little bit of smoke back puffing out of there. However, once that stove is burning nice and hot, it's not really going to be an issue. Also, keep in mind during your first burn, you do get that um, burn off smell. Your paints and stuff are burning off and curing. So, when you go to do that first burn, you are going to see excess smoke. That is not standard for operation of the unit, okay? Um, that's why I keep the door open. That's why I recommend to my customers, if you're sensitive, definitely do the burn outside, just in general. Um, yeah, those paints and all that kind of toxic stuff in the stove. So now that I have my stove lit up, I'm going to let it burn here for probably about kind of like 20, 25 minutes and then give you guys that temperature reading so you can see how quickly the stove heats up. I am probably about 20 minutes into my burn. I can tell that the stove is heating up quickly. Um, number one, the cooktop is changing already and I'm literally on just my kindling fire. And also I can smell it as well because it's my first burn and the stove is off gassing. So I'm gonna give you guys these temperature readings right now. Directly over the cook plate is, holy crap, 573 degrees. So this is like really hot 
for a small little kindling fire like that. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen like that I've tested another stove that has heated up so quickly. So I'll just throw that out, right out there off the bat. I think if you have like a weekend cabin and you're looking for a stove, that's gonna heat the place up really quickly, this ML80 is a great option. Or if you're looking to cook or bake on the stove very quickly, again, the ML series is gonna be a great option. All right, center cook plate, 570 degrees. Front corner, 199. Back corner of the stove, 233. Front corner here is 138. In front of the flue, 168. So these are our initial kindling burn um, readings and I'm going to let this die down before I move into my medium burn and give you guys those temperature readings. This is the discoloration on the cooktop and this is literally just my kindling burn. My first burn um, kindling like this size fuel loaded the firebox about halfway full. My center cook plate is already at like 580 degrees. Um, yeah, stove heats up nice and quick. When I burned like the S series, it was definitely took a little bit longer, probably based on the depth of the firebox. I mean, with this, you're like right under that cooktop. So I walked away from the stove for like 15 minutes, approximately 20 minutes into my kindling fire burn, and it almost went out. So I will say that the Rizzoli stoves burn really quick. I mean, obviously with my cooktop temperature hitting like 650 degrees in such a short amount of time. So um, I'm going to add a little more kindling in here. I mean, I do still have a bed of coals. So it's not like I have to totally restart it, but because I don't have a whole lot of them, I'm going to put some kindling on here and let that go just for a short little minute. And then I'll go ahead and add my logs on the top of that. Yeah. And so you can see literally just closing the door like that, the fire really does get better combustion airflow when the door's shut and it's operating the way that it's meant to be. Um, so yeah, that took off really nice. I am going to go ahead and add in these other items because I do want to go into my medium burn, which obviously on the ML80 is a much quicker process than with the other models. I mean, even then with like the S90 and the L90, and granted when I do this, I am running them wide open until I shut them down for the night. So that's why I kind of control my temperature with the amount of wood that's in there. But I mean, with the firebox being directly below the cooktop like this, this is to be accept expected. The side panels themselves are pretty cool, which obviously they will be because the stove only has a two inch clearance to combustibles. Um, so that means these panels are basically gonna be you know, not even hot to the touch. When you have a cooktop that's hitting 650 degrees and your side panels like not even hitting 100 degrees on the top, um, that's pretty good insulation factor. And then you're gonna get that coming off the cooktop itself through these convection holes, which is why you still have the rear clearances that are required, is not so much the heat coming off the actual rear of the stove, but the uh, massive amount of heat that you're getting off your cooktop here. Yeah, honestly, um, with my medium burn, it's a little bit more challenging to get this second log in there because it's burning like so hot and I think I'm gonna need a smaller cut piece of wood to fit into this box and then um, I waited too long. If I'm gonna load this like full, if you're gonna load it full for the night, you wanna do that, you know, when those coals are small like that because when it gets ripping hot, well, I suppose I could also be in front of you. to add in, that would be the other way, um, is to damper it down, you know, to get that lower burn. But when you're putting in the wood, 
So you can see the air control on that as well. That's pretty good. Shut down to wide open. It moves very quickly. And wide open, the stove gets hot. So I'll update you guys with my medium temperature burns here in just a few. I'm at my medium temperature burns and I'm almost wondering if my medium isn't more like hot because of how quickly the stove got going. And maybe I built my kindling fire like too big and I should have started with less kindling. I just didn't realize how hot it is like right there with no protection, the firebox, the flame and the cooktop. So um, right now I'm now at, yeah, 608 degrees. 271 at the front of the stove here. About 232 over here in the corner. 293 in front of the flue. About 576 back here. Over this other flue hole is about 183 degrees. Side panels now reading 120 at the top. 88 degrees at the bottom. Right hand side panel, woo, bug, is reading 136 at the top and 85 degrees at the bottom. So these are our medium temperature readings. All right, I'm going to give you guys the hot temperature readings right now. Center cook plate is now 654. So yeah, I think that's a little hotter. Um, back here is 597 degrees. Over this plate is now at 220. This left hand side is at 597. Front corner here is at about 330, three, I'm sorry, 375. Um, Front corner here is at 464. Back in front of the blue collar is now at 588. So, yes, we exceeded. This is a hotter temperature reading. Um, top of the panel is now at 154 degrees. Bottom is at 95. That's the left hand side. Right hand side is reading. 164, bottom is at 92. So these air holes directly here, which I was saying you're gonna push the heat, yeah, I can feel them. The hot air coming out the oven side is at 190 degrees. Over the left hand side here, air flow is, yeah, 166 degrees. No, not excessively hot, I mean nice, amount of warm air coming off the top. Um, it's kind of nice because in general cooking and stuff can feel warmer on your legs. So having these side panels that are cooler to be able to stand off to the side of the stove and still have those hot, hot um, cooking temperatures is a very nice feature to have. All right, so I gave you guys those hot temperature readings. Now it's time to um, damper down the stove and kind of see what we're gonna get for that burn time tonight. A few points I would say on doing the first burn here. The stove heats up very quickly and when it's wide open, you're gonna burn through your wood pretty quick. However, also you're gonna get up to temperature very quick. So if your goal is to be able to do a lot of cooking and stuff in a short amount of time or heating the oven up to temperature quickly, this is a nice option. Also, if you're looking to throw that heat pretty quickly as well because it's like a weekend cabin or something of you know that sort where you wanna be able to heat up the space very quickly, that could be a good option as well. Now, what else is nice about this model is because the cooktop is so close to the top and it pushes the smoke to the bottom of the oven, it's very easy to build a small fire and not produce as much heat but still be able to cook and bake at those hotter temperatures. So I have to say that this stack series is honestly like 
a, a baker slash cooker's dream stove if you're tight on space. Uh, it's been probably like the easiest to get up to temperature quickly as, as far as probably any stacked model goes that I've ever actually tested and burned, which I've done quite a few. Um, so I am impressed with that. Um, yeah, definitely somebody who's very much into cooking and baking and enjoys that would absolutely love the Rizzoli ML80 stove. As always, if you like my videos, give me that thumbs up. Don't forget to click the subscribe button in the corner of the channel. That helps me out so much, you guys. Thanks for your continued loyal support. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.